Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to Everybody Eats. My name is Abby, and today we're gonna to be reviewing Scott Derrickson's new horror film, The Black Phone. Scott Derrickson's The Black Phone is a familiar Stephen King inspired horror film that stands out thanks to some haunting visceral imagery and sharp direction. However, the film feels tonally muddled, unevenly scattering to find unnecessary comedy within the trauma, eventually leading to a crowd pleasing ending that doesn't quite fit the rest of the narrative. Ethan Hawke manages to give a terrifying performance, but one that doesn't feel completely realized due to its shallow characterization. Mason Thames, in his first debut picture, gives a tremendous performance and manages to carry the best moments on his back, especially when put head to head with Hawke. The film takes place in Denver, 1978. Finney, played by Thames, as well as his sister, played by Madeline McGraw, are two children who live with their widowed, abusive, alcoholic father, Terrence, played by Jeremy Davies, all while a child abductor is loose around town. Finney has trouble with bullies at school and ends up striking a relationship with another kid named Robin, played by Miguel Casares Mora. Robin fends them off, but he tells Finney to stand up for himself in the process. Eventually, Robin gets kidnapped, and days later, so does Finney. Though there are two officers on the case, it mainly ends up being Gwen's responsibility to save Finney due to her psychic premonitions, an ability her mother possessed as well. Finney ends up in a basement with all but a black phone, which he is able to contact previous victims with, or more more so they'll contact him. The Grabber, played by Ethan Hawke, wearing various terrifying masks, frequently visits Finney seemingly just to toy with him. The central premise is incredibly interesting. Using the supernatural element to tell a story of abuse victims, breaking the cycle for future children. It's a film that initially leads towards more of a serious tone, though the comedy and crowd-pleasing antics eventually muddle their way in leaving more of an impact to be desired by the finale. And yes, the finale does contain a couple fantastic shocking moments, but that's the moment where Derrickson finally chooses to switch from substance to style, which is a choice I wish he would have confidently chosen much earlier on. It's a film that just feels a little disingenuous by the end, vaguely touching on darker and much more poignant thematic material, and dropping it all for a cheeky ending where Finney escapes and within the next story beat gets the girl? There's a lot of wasted potential for something a lot more cutting here, which is seemingly the direction it intends to go in the first act. And though the third act is formally effective here, it just doesn't feel like it belongs in the story Derrickson was trying to tell in the first place. Finney's relationship with Robin is the emotional crux of the film, and it's executed in such a tender manner within all the teenage brutishness. Derrickson channels the voices of these tormented boys in a way that not only feels unique in its visual implementation, but even compared to the rest of the characters in the film. The dialogue of the boys, especially Robin and Finney's, feel a lot more subdued and natural compared to everyone else. McGraw does a fine job at playing the smartass little sister, but her lines feel a little too unnatural and expository for a child, especially in contrast to Finney's. And then Davy's portrayal of a haunted, abusive father is one I just could not get behind, feeling much more of a cartoonish representation than one with actual emotional depth. And then that shallow, villainous representation Presentation kind of carries over to the grabber as well. Moments of creepiness sporadically intertwined with no true characterization to truly back it up. But either way, Hawk does a tremendous job at what he's given to work with. Though within the muddled screenplay and mostly lackluster dialogue, Derrickson's direction stands tall. He is able to channel the suburban Americana horror in such a manner that feels less like an homage and more of a story that actually belongs in this time period. At least much more so than other popular IPs that rip off the 70s and 80s purely for cheap nostalgia. He crafts a formally functional horror film that by the end just feels all too familiar, though I will admit there still is some delight in purely watching an original horror movie. Though the shock value finale features some solid kills, it's just not enough to wrap the film up in a manner that does its initial narrative and themes justice. Though with talks of a sequel on the board, I hope Derrickson is able to come back and take another stab within this world, hopefully expanding the concept a bit more and finding more of a confident tone off the get-go. So yeah, Scott Derrickson's A Black Phone is going to get three stars from me. It's definitely a horror movie I would recommend if you are a horror fan or just a 
fan of small scale thrillers like this. It's an exciting movie, but just one that I wish pushed its own boundaries just a bit more. Ethan Hawke is incredible as usual and proves he is still one of the best to ever do it. And Mason Thames gives a tremendous performance as well, and I cannot wait to see what he does next. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. My name was Abby. This was Everybody Eats. Hope you had a great time, and we have a ton more content coming out soon, so stay tuned.